This is Citizen Weekend with the Olive Barrows. Very good evening to you. Glad you could join me on Citizen Weekend. Tonight we have the latest on the Deputy President's fight for survival given the threat of impeachment that is looming large. And with Ambassador Martin Kimani, who you can see right behind me, we'll be delving into the question of whether the United Nations remains fit for purpose and what he makes of the clamor for Africa to get two permanent seats on the UN Security Council. But as is the custom, we begin with the highlights. Si mulichagua rais William Ruto na mimi? Yeah. Tikiti moja. Yeah. Sasa itakuwaje utaki kachagua unataka William Ruto? Yeah. Inawezekana? Yeah. Kama utaki kachagua? Yeah. Sindio? Yeah. Siko na mna hiyo? I was elected to. Deputy President Gashagwa accuses opponents of trying to overturn the will of the people as he takes his survival battle to Kirinyaga, Embu and Meru. Wacha tutafute deputy president mungine na tumekubaliana Kenya mzima kwamba deputy president atakuwa professor Kedore Kitiki. Your fate is sealed. President Ruto's allies sustain impeachment drive and label Gashagwa a saboteur of government. Where and who are they? Disparities over number of Kenyans missing during anti-government protests sparks questions with families remaining in the dark. We are at about 1.93 million Kenyans. By the speed at which they are registering, we are convinced by Monday, Tuesday, we shall have the number. Rising compliance levels. More Kenyans register under the Social Health Authority despite opposition to government plans as NHIF prepares for dissolution. I'm joined tonight by a sign language interpreter, Yula Nzale. Deputy President Rigathi Gashagwa today scaled up his campaign against impeachment touring Kirinyaga, Embu and Meru counties, where he told residents that some of his allies had been offered large amounts of money to sign on to the push to impeach him. The Deputy President, in a series of rallies, further accused the members of Parliament of misleading the President to accept their impeachment push that is expected to be tabled on Tuesday next week. Kicking us off on Citizen Week. Can tonight is Stephen Little. In an all-out onslaught against his boss, President William Ruto, and the Kenya Kwanzaa lawmakers, Deputy President Rigadi Gashago went bare knuckle, speaking of cash handouts meant to lure allies into the opponent's camp to the tune of five million shillings to sign the impeachment motion. <laughs> The deputy president has been traversing Mount Kenya counties in what appears a bid to marshal support against the president and his allies. We talk of an impeachment motion gathering momentum. His rallies today included Kirinyaga. Embu, Tarakanithi, and Meru counties, where he was categorical that he, alongside President William Ruto, were elected on a joint ticket and that one cannot be impeached without the other. Mimi na uliza, simulichagua rais William Ruto na mimi. Tikiti moja. Sasa itakuwaje utaki kachagua unataka William Ruto. Inaweza kana? Kama utaki kachagua? Sindio? Siko na mna hiyo? Siko na mna hiyo? 
Gashagwa's tour of Mount Kenya is today seemingly targeting the region's MPs who have signed the impeachment motion. Out of the 22 members of parliament from the larger Mount Kenya East, two MPs turned up to receive Gashagwa. Manyata lawmaker John Mukunji and Tharaka Nithi woman representative Susan Ngugi. The larger Mount Kenya has 87 MPs with only five MPs from the region accompanying the deputy president on his tour of four counties today. You are excellence ukioa bibi wa mwanzo hata ukipata bibi wa pili tafadhali usifukuze yule wa kwanza. The deputy president building his case before his supporters accused those behind the impeachment push of misleading the president. Gashagwa going all out claiming he was a key component of the UDA win. Siliwamia mchagua wili ya muruto. Simuli mchagua pamoja na mimi. Kama singe kuwa hapo munga mchagua. Munga mchagua. Unajua raisa na daganyo na vijana. Oh, wameru walikupenda. Hata bila kachagua wange kuchagua. Ni, ni uongo hapa ni ukweli? Ni uongo hapa ni ukweli? My brother President William Ruto. Ah watu ya mlima Kenya ni wangwana. Ni wangwana. Wali kuchagua wewe na regadhi kachagua miaka ngapi? Na hapa kikwetu wanasema ukitaka ngombe hapa ile kamba inaifunga uta? Kama unataka mulima, upende mtoto wao pia. Some of the president's allies have said that they will be replacing the deputy president with interior CS Professor Kithure Kindiki. The deputy president maintains he is not phased. Atu wana niuzia uoga watanifukuza kwa kazi. Eh? Atu wana niuzia uoga. Mimi ni muti ya kuuzia uoga. The deputy president seems keen on running his meet the people tour through the weekend even as his opponents take the political hit and no chaya. Stephen Leto, Citizen TV. The push to oust Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa by way of impeachment is gaining momentum. With more National Assembly members allied to President William Bruto expressing their support for the motion. The members of parliament accuse the Deputy President of advancing tribal politics and playing succession politics instead of focusing on delivering the Kenya Kwan's administration's pledges to the people. And as Laura Otieno reports, the UDA party has vowed to eject Gashagwa from the party should the impeachment motion sail through parliament, with the president's personal aide, Farouk Kibet, accusing the DP of preaching tribalism. The clouds are gathering above Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa as more members of parliament appended their signatures in support of the motion to yank him from the seat of power. Legislators from Mount Kenya allied to President William Ruto fingered Gashagwa for alleged failure in delivering on duties assigned to him, advocating for a change of the president's principal helper. <laughs> Iyo maneno tumetoa kabisa ati wengine sijui wapi na wengine wapi hiyo tumesema rais wetu ametoa hii ametoa hii ni professor Kidure Kindiki Yule ndio deputy wa kwanza ambaye amekubaliwa kutea cabinet full cabinet lakini badala yeye asaidie rais kufanya kazi yeye kazi yake ni kupigana na president Speaking at a Thanksgiving event in Tarbo, Wasengishu County, more leaders threw salvos at the country's second in command, accusing him of advancing tribal politics with Navaholo MP Emmanuel Wangwe touting the proposal to scrap the appointment of a running mate during the general elections. Tuweze kuchagua mtu akiwa ni governor, tuchagua governor. Akiwa na president, tuchagua president. Alafu ateuwe baada ya kuchaguliwa ataue mtu mwenye atasaidiana na yeye kazi The Deputy President's Party the United Democratic Alliance also seemingly keen on cutting links with him as Secretary General Hassan Omar said impeachment of the Deputy President would be followed by action at party level Our immediate concern then will be to eject him also as a member of the party because then you cannot be found to be gro gro grossly uh, incompetent grossly uh, 
uh, undermining the constitution and national unity and then still become a, a ranking member of this party. The deputy president under siege with the president's personal aid also taking at him. Wewe mwenye unataka kujitokeza kuwa mkabila kuja tangaza hapo Nairobi. Kwamba mimi agenda yangu kubwa ni ukabila. Uone kama utapikiwa kura. Mtu asituambie mlima sisi watu wa mlima sisi ni watu wa wapi? Hata Kilimanjaro ni mlima wetu wa East Africa. Na bado 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 Sources indicate that the impeachment motion against Riga the Gashagwa has so far garnered 300 signatures with a motion anticipated to be tabled in the coming week. Laura Tieno Citizen TV. DAPK party leader Eugene Wamalwa has urged Kimilili Member of Parliament Didmas Baraza to refrain from what he says is being used by the Kenya Kwanza regime to table a motion of impeachment against Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa. Speaking during a burial ceremony in Didmas Baraza's Kimilili constituency, Wamalwa called on the Kenya Kwanza legislator not to be swayed by Mount Kenya politicians in their efforts to undermine the Deputy President, criticizing the Kenya Kwanza administration of straying from their election promises, stating that impeaching Gashagwa is a misplaced priority. Wamalwa emphasized that Didmas should focus on serving his constituents and bringing development to the people of the Western region whose sugar industry is struggling, rather than engaging in conflicts from other regions. <laughs> Wewe ulitoa ahadi kupigania wakulima wa miwa katika kaunti ya Bungoma na Western na Kenya yote. Sio mambo ya kukuimpeach Gashagwa. Gashagwa akiwa impeach, ugali utaongezeka hapa kimilili. Fizi itashuka kweli. Wakulima wanzoea watapata majini mupia. Hapo ndio si tuambia bwana Didmas stay focused on fighting for your people, not fighting the wars of others. Na tunasikia ya kwamba mtoto wetu ambaye ni bunge wetu hapa yeye ndio atatumika labda kwa ile kisu ambayo itaenda kumchinja bwana Gashagwa nataka niulize watu wa kimilili hayo ndio mambo tumetuma mbunge wetu kufanya that is not what we send didmas kama mbunge wetu wa kimilili kufanya na mimi nikimpata i will advise him don't be misused the National Health Insurance Fund, NHIF, has reassured employees that job losses are off the table in the upcoming transition to the Social Health Authority on October the 1st. Tension among NHIF staff has been reported due to the fresh vetting and recruitment exercise that is said to be conducted by the new body. The management reports that 1.9 million Kenyans had been registered on SHA as of Saturday evening. With more is Melita. 58 years of a legacy dotted with graft within the National Health Insurance Fund come to a close, giving way to the Social Health Authority. The exodus has created tension within the NHIF, with thousands of employees now at the mercy of the new employer. But the management of the old scheme has allayed fears of any layoffs. No employee will be fired no employee will lose a job. We have three options. SHA will take after it finalizes on its human resource in instruments, will recruit those that they would like to recruit. And the first option in this recruitment will be NHIF staff. Those that are not the Social Health Insurance Act of 2023, which established the framework for the management of the Social Health Authority, grants moving of assets and contractual obligations from NHIF to SHA. Now, those that will not be taken up by SHA and are not taken up by, or other, and don't choose to go for the voluntary early retirement, will be sent to Public Service Commission for redeployment into the various agencies. However, a report released in March 2024 by the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission on the examination of systems, policies and procedures at NHIF revealed massive irregularities leading to the loss of millions of shillings. 
NHIF says it has since been weeding out corrupt individuals. Where it is proved that someone is indeed involved in fraud, we have separated with many. Where it is an allegation and there is no proof, then the people who have been under investigation have been cleared and have gone back to work. Infiltration in the training of healthcare workers in facilities across the country by Kenyans opposed to Shah on Friday threatened to slow down the process of the rollout. But the management says it is recording an increase in registrations. As we speak, we are at about 1.93 million Kenyans. By the speed at which they are registering, we are convinced by Monday, Tuesday, we shall have the number. A new regulation in the registration process is expected to accelerate the registration of Kenyans. The abbreviations NHIF are fading from this iconic building in Upper Hill, Nairobi, signifying the end of an era and the beginning of a new one. Shah offices will now be housed here even as the rollout of the new scheme begins. And even though the management insists no employee will be fired, the fate of the employees who will not be picked by Shah hangs in the balance, a redirection looming if they are referred to back to the Public Service Commission. Melita, Oletenge, Citizen TV, Nairobi. The National Assembly Committee on Sports and Culture has raised questions over possible embezzlement of funds in the State Department for Culture, the Arts and Heritage over a plan to develop 50 million shilling, a 50 million shilling digital platform app to help small scale traders to market their items online. Appearing before the committee, the Culture, Arts and Heritage PS, Umi Bashir, said the quote, world class app was already under works. And as Emmanuel Ton now reports, the lawmakers also raised concern over the department's plan to spend 100 million shillings to design the Kenyan dress. At least confirm. The Culture, Arts and Heritage State Department under Principal Secretary Umi Bashir has committed a considerable amount of money for a digital platform app. The PS who appeared before the National Assembly Sports and Culture Committee on Thursday, revealing that a project to come up with a digital app, dubbed Sana App, had been awarded at a total cost of 50 million shillings. And how comes 50 million can be used to design or a, a digital platform? I think that is too much. Design and development of digital platform Sana application this is an application whereby artists and, and, and um, Ushanga and Kamba Carvings, Kisi Soapstones can be sold online and you can purchase from anywhere you are in the country before we go internationally. The State Department says the state of the art app is meant to be a top-notch marketing platform for the hustlers to sell their products on site and is the first of its kind in Africa. This app has been awarded a uh, disbursement of 50,000 contract uh, contracted at 46 sorry 50 million and contracted at 46 million. Questions have also cropped up over the government's plan to design a national dress at a staggering budget of 100 million shillings. I think every administration comes with the, the idea that there'll be a Kenyan dress money is spent but we have never seen a Kenyan dress. And also why the Kenyan dress and uh, where the trousers and uh, shirts because you are just talking about a Kenyan dress. From where I sit, we don't necessarily want right to have one national dress. The renewed quest comes 20 years after the government burnt its fingers in the first attempt to come up with the attire, which gobbled up 50 million shillings. There were also concerns on how the State Department blew away 55 million shillings to host the Kiswahili Day celebration, which took place between the 5th to 7th July in Mombasa County. Records show 10 million shillings was paid out as allowances to the participants, whose details have not been availed, and 12 million shillings paid on promotional items. So my son is where we had a conference and the conference was for 300 packs where people are able to look at uh, matters to do with Kiswahili. <laughs> Members had also raised concerns on the 200 million shillings budget used during the Paris Olympics for the exhibition of Kenya House. Members querying whether there was value for money in the project. Emmanuel Toh, Citizen TV, Nairobi. 
Questions continue to come up on the whereabouts of 65 missing Kenyans who disappeared during recent anti-government protests and who the government says it is not aware of their whereabouts. Last week, Interior Cabinet Secretary Professor Kithure Kindiki revealed that 132 persons are missing, the number way above what rights groups have said are 65. Despite the Kenya Kwanzaa government pledging to end cases of enforced disappearances and and extrajudicial killings. The police have been put under the spotlight over abductions and deployment of extrajudicial means. Ayub Abdikadir with that report. I, William Samoe Ruto. 113 days after ascending to power and committing to end extrajudicial killings and cases of enforced disappearances, the head of state visibly frustrated pledged before the public the extent to which his administration will go to contain a worrying trend, he said, should be arrested. What, ki what, kind of, what, what kind of rogue, you know, institution? And that is why I fired that Kenoti man, you know, because, I mean, it's, it's not right, good people. Despite the government's commitment to not take the foot off the pedal, glaring inconsistencies have emerged, including reports of a number of missing Kenyans, the government could not account for. A trial time for the government. <laughs> Stung by the anti-finance bill demonstrations culminating in the breach of parliament by demonstrators, aggrieved by the conduct of their representatives who passed a punitive bill, and with authorities having been called out for high-handedness and extrajudicial killings, the government mounted a robust defense. Most times, the president himself appearing ill-informed a town hall session in the county of Kisumu providing an ample illustration. Because as I talk to you today, I don't have a single name of somebody who has been abducted or disappeared. And the Minister for Interior, the, the PS for Interior is here, Raymond. If, so Peter, Kama huko na jina, mutu alienda maandamano, akapotea, hajulikani mahali yuko, we will deal with that situation. And so how many Kenyans are missing? I have been asked to inform this committee and by extension parliament how many people were reported missing during the June, July violent routes across the country. 132. The revelations by the Interior CS Professor Kithure Kindiki far exceed the number of missing Kenyans reported by right bodies including the Kenyan National Human Rights Commission, Amnesty International, the Independent Medical Legal Unit and the Law Society of Kenya. 61 persons who've lost their lives and these are the cases we call extrajudicial killings. 61. As IMLU we have conducted autopsies on 49 of those bodies that tell us the actual cause of death. During the same period, 67 people were reported missing or abducted, raising fears among lobby groups. The president at one point or another did say or state that he did not have the names of the missing persons. And so we are calling for the immediate release of these 27. Going by the accounts of the government and the right groups, where are the 65 missing Kenyans? Who is behind their abduction? And how will the government account for them? It remains unresolved, coupled with inaction by the government on its commitment to the rule of law, on the protection of its citizens. Cases of missing Kenyans are back to haunt the government, some captured on camera and others through eyewitness accounts, in a classic case of the past, characterizing the present. Ayub Abdikadir, Citizen TV. 
A student at Sironga Girls National School in Nyamira County has been confirmed dead after allegedly jumping from the second floor of the school building. Mitchell Chepto, age 17, and a Form 4 student is reported to have taken her own life at 5 a.m. on Saturday. Uh, students were waking up to prepare for Sabbath. Confirming the incident, the school's principal, Jane Nyanumba, said that students who were hanging clothes saw Mitchell fall from the second floor. Mitchell was rushed to Nyamira County Referral Hospital, where she was confirmed dead upon arrival due to severe head injuries. Security agencies have launched an investigation to determine the exact circumstances of the incident. Our girl by the name uh, Michelle Chepto from Fork Rim. Today morning at 5, when the rest of the girls were going to take a shower, uh, decided to jump from uh, the second floor of the hostel. She fell down and hit her head. And we took her to Nyamira level five, where she was uh, confirmed dead on arrival. She sustained injuries uh, at the back of her head. It's like she fell uh, like that. We are told that she used to keep to herself. She's kind of a controvert girl. We have been able to peruse through her books. We have not been able to get any note left behind. But uh, as security officers, we are still on with our investigations and we'll ensure that we investigate and try to find out what might have happened. A section of Matatu owners in Kisumu have called for a roundtable with the National Transport and Safety Authority over the decision to suspend 121 Matatu Sakos for non-compliance with road safety regulations. MOA Kisumu Secretary James Omwa said the decision will not only cripple transport services, but will also lead to the loss of livelihoods for those who rely on the sector. NTSA had on Friday directed the traffic department to impound vehicles belonging to any of the 121 SACOs while cautioning the public against using vehicles registered under the marked SACOs. Among the SACOs that have been suspended include town service matatus as well as long-haul vehicles that operate across various counties. Kusumamisha biashara ya wananchi zaidi ya alafu moja na saa zingine bila kusikizwa sababu utapata ya kwamba pengine kwa sako moja kuna gari moja ilifanya makosa ama magari mbili na magari yote yanaweza kuambiwa ya kwamba hasa operation zao za kibiashara zimesimamishwa ombi letu ni kujumatatu enti so waweza kutupatia nafasi kujadili makosa haya na jinsi ya kutatua na kurekebisha ili pia tusaidiane nao kwa self regulation kupunguza ajali barabarani nchini Kenya We take a break on a Citizen Weekend, but as promised, I'll be joined by Ambassador Martin Kimani on the other side of this break. And we'll be discussing the proposed reforms to the UN Security Council, among other items on President William Ruto's global agenda. We need equity. The African push for permanent seats at the UN Security Council. This and more after the break. World leaders this week convened at the United Nations headquarters in New York for the annual for the annual General Assembly. But as they meet or as they met to discuss and front solutions for the crises that confront continents, the UN systems have been criticized as being unequal to the challenges of our times. Our among reforms fronted are for a more inclusive and representative UN Security Council. A behemoth of an institution. The United Nations has been around for just about 79 years. Formed after World War II, the UN officially came into existence following ratification of its charter by China, France, the Soviet Union, the United Kingdom and the United States, who make up five permanent members of the Security Council and who are allies in the war. Its purpose, prevent another world war.
But with the escalating conflicts around the world, from the Middle East to Eastern Europe and on the African continent, the UN architecture is increasingly coming under criticism for its impotence. Kenya among those clamoring for a reform of the institution. The world's most powerful states have increasingly chosen unilateralism and militarization over dialogue and diplomacy. As a consequence, the capacity of our multilateral institutions to maintain and enforce peace, even in national crises with significant regional impacts, is severely undermined. Even with regard to the climate crisis, the UN has shown itself incapable of holding its member states to account. What goes on in the minds of those who prioritize economic returns over people? Ladies and gentlemen, what really happened to humanity? Circumstances that renewed calls for greater inclusion at the apex. The council is by all intents and purposes dysfunctional, undemocratic, non-inclusive, unaccountable, autocratic, and at, at best, opaque. An institution that excludes 54 African countries with 1.4 billion people, while allowing one nation to veto decisions of the remaining 193 member states in the 21st century is simply unacceptable. Placing the fate of the world's security in the hands of a select few when it is the vast majority of the peoples of the world who bear the brunt of the various threats is unjust, unfair, and unsustainable. Two years ago, President, about, President Biden announced that the United States support ex supports expanding the Security Council to provide permanent representation for countries from Africa, as well as Latin America and the Caribbean, that in addition to the countries we long supported for permanent seats, India, Japan, and Germany. We've been very, very clear uh, that we do not support expansion of the veto. But there are those who argue that before Africa can demand a permanent seat on the UN Security Council, let alone two as proposed by the US, it must get its house in order. The AU relies on external partners for funding as member states fail to meet their obligations. And even as African member states agitate for an opening up of the democratic space of the UN Security Council, their record of holding up the same ideals within their own borders are dismal. As promised, I'm joined by Ambassador Martin Kimani, who sat on the very same uh, UN Security Council. I believe, Ambassador, you were president in the month of October. Was it 2021 Kenya was? Yes. Uh, good evening. I, yes, I was. We were in the Security Council in 2021 and 2022, and I served as a president of the Security Council in October of 2021. All right. So this is a subject of, on which you've been tweeting, or is it now Xing? And in fact, you even caught the attention of uh, Rwanda's President Paul Kagame. Uh, do you, why? Because I got the impression that you feel it is premature for Africa to be awarded uh, two seats, as proposed uh, by uh, President Joe Biden on the UN Security Council, permanent seats, that is. No, no, I don't think it's premature. And certainly Africa has been, uh, there are three African seats in the Security Council. Uh, I think the argument by Africa has been that we want permanent seats with the right of veto, unless the veto is removed for everybody. Uh, so it's not premature. I think my comment on social media was that Africa cannot get these seats as an act of charity. It needs to be an assertion of African interests and leverage so that Africa goes to the Security Council to do something with the permanent seats, not merely to sit on them permanently. And that requires Africa to be resolute in how it reforms its own peace and security architecture so that it dovetails with the Security Council. Um, Africa has not been ready to implement 
its uh, the reforms that it has agreed for itself. Um, and so going to the Security Council without restructuring how we protect peace and security in Africa will essentially be mere inclusion and not empowerment. So uh, the response to your posts, uh, uh, President Kagame talked about having the AU occupy one of those seats and then have the other one be rotational. Uh, what do you make, to that, make of that proposal? Well, President Kagame um, was making, I think he started a great discussion uh, that I think is going to pick up momentum in the months and years to come. Um, he said that there should be the African Union should have a seat, African Union Commission, and that the other seat should revolve uh, between different countries. Now, that is not the, yet the official position of the African Union. The African Union has kept its demands to seats, number of seats, as opposed to who would fill them. And I, the fear is that the fight over the, the countries that would become permanent members would disunite Africa a great deal. All right, but uh, you've, I, I also got the impression, just looking at your writing on the subject, that you feel that uh, AU reforms should take precedence. Uh, Olive, Africa is having a crisis of leadership. What else can we call it when Sudan is being torn apart? When the Sahel is in desperate trouble, the Horn of Africa is huddling towards war. Um, this is a time for African leadership to emerge. If Africans cannot resolve to do what they have to do to protect their own peace and security, then it really calls into question the leadership we have on the continent and its ability to rally. Now, by the time you make claims in the UN Security Council, while not able to actually even engage on peace building and, and, and the uh, conflict prevention in our own neighborhood, um, how would we use these permanent seats if we cannot use the architecture we have now? All right. And just speaking generally, do you feel that the UN system remains fit for purpose? Because the argument uh, by various leaders are that conflicts have escalated across the globe, that uh, member states have not met their obligations where climate change commitments are concerned. Uh, have you ever heard of the saying, a poor workman blames his tools? Uh, look, the UN, the UN has been dysfunctional since the day it was created. Uh, the UN has always suffered uh, a gap in confidence. The UN has always been driven by rivalries. There are no good old days of the United Nations. There were times when it was more effective. But the UN becomes effective because there's leadership to lead it. It's not just a question of reforms. The UN, with the instruments it has now, can do a more than adequate job. The problem of the UN is not lack of reforms. The problem of the UN is lack of resolve. And that resolve needs to be brought by political leaders. But worldwide, political leaders are more interested in narrow and short-sighted agendas. We have lost the Africa of Meles Zenawi, of Tabumbeki, of Obasanjo. We need that Africa back. Uh, and we need that leadership back more than this constant talk of reforms, which is just a form of hiding from the lack of leadership. Mm -hmm. Speaking of a lack of leadership, is the problem that the UN system is not representative? Because there has been the argument, even uh, from the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, that uh, when the UN was formed, when these systems were set up, Africa was still under colonial rule. There is a sense that uh, the global south is not represented, um, for example, on the UN Security Council, where the permanent seats are concerned. There are only five. And even the powers that Germany, that are Germany, that are Japan, are not represented uh, where the five permanent seats are concerned with veto power? Well, it, it's certainly true that we were not, most African countries were not independent at the time uh, that the UN was created. And the five seats are the winners of World War II. Uh, and that is the architecture that was built at the time. Um, should there be African seats? Absolutely. And 
would that make a, for a more effective Security Council? Not necessarily. What matters is, one, the expansion of the Security Council would certainly be a good thing. The change of global governance, whether it's a reform of the international financial institutions and how global decision making is made, certainly needs changes. My point is that those changes are not going to come because the powerful are ready to give them. They're going to come because the rest are resolved and united enough in pursuing them. And so I am waiting for the American invitation to be taken up by African leadership to see whether African leadership can be truly visionary and strategic when it comes to pursuing Security Council reform. The Security Council have been, has been accused of being indecisive. Is the problem with the veto power? If today there was no veto power on the Security Council, then the major powers would walk away from the Security Council. Um, the Security Council does suffer from the veto because with the veto, one member of the Permanent Five is able to stop what most countries and most people believe to be the most reasonable cause of action. So, for instance, the vetoes following um, the Russian invasion of Ukraine by Russia were taken with a lot of frustration by countries that thought a participant in a war should not be prosecuting uh, in the Security Council on behalf of itself with a veto. At the same time, the vetoes by the United States um, protecting Israel's assault on Gaza have been deeply frustrating to the membership. And there are now proposals that the veto should either be, um, be able to be overcome by uh, a large proportion of votes in the General Assembly, or that the veto should not be used in situations where there are atrocities and massive um, abuses against human rights and even acts of genocide. And that's a French-Mexican proposal. Of course, the problem with all the proposals against the veto is that the veto holders can veto that proposal. And so I, I have huge doubts that the veto is going to go anywhere. The question is, if African countries got the veto, what would they do with it? All right. Uh, Haiti was big on President uh, William Ruto's agenda. In fact, he stopped by there before uh, heading to New York on leaving the country. He called for more support. He thanked the U.S., he thanked Canada, uh, but he said that the challenge with getting 2,500 boots on ground by January is that they have a shortfall where equipment and financing is concerned. Do you think his uh, call to action will be of success? Well, if I, I personally think I am so proud of our policemen, Kenyan policemen. Um, whatever it is that they, the shortfalls they have at home, certainly their deployment really shows Kenyan solidarity uh, at its best. But as President Ruto said, um, that mission is under-equipped and under-resourced. And questions, hard questions need to be asked is why would we have agreed to a deployment that is under-resourced and under-equipped? Secondly, where is the international community, and particularly the United States have pushed so hard for this deployment? Thirdly, I think it's important to not oversell, oversell what the Kenyan police can do in Haiti. Haiti is a complex country with profound problems and a contingent of police officers is beyond the ability or it's beyond the ability of a contingent of police officers to solve Haiti's problems. What is required is for there to be concerted action on the political front that uses the opportunity of the Kenyan police and others giving pol the political class room to breathe from the gangs and then crafting a political structure, a government, an election that takes Haiti towards stability. But the Kenyan police, on their own, cannot change Haiti. And any attempts to sell that as an agenda, to overpromise, will lead to a painful strategic situation. I believe the mandate ends, um, the multinational uh, security missions mandate ends uh, next month, if I'm not mistaken? 
Yes, there, there will be debates in the Security Council on whether to renew the mandate of the MSS. There is a desire by the United States uh, and some other countries in the Security Council to, to, to change this from an MSS mission to a United Nations peacekeeping mission. And the reason for that is simply, again, the issue of resources. If it becomes a UN peacekeeping mission, then it will be paid for using assessed contributions from all member states. Um, but the Russians and the Chinese and others in the council are very reluctant to give a mandate. So we'll see how it plays out. We'll see how good Kenyan diplomacy is in working with the Americans to actually see whether this can be rehutted into a UN peacekeeping mission. And just quickly to be aware, the last UN peacekeeping mission to Haiti uh, left in very bad conditions. And to this day, there's a massive gap of trust in Haiti when it comes to the blue helmets. So the attempt to rehut is basically turning back the clock uh, and is going to be very difficult, not only the Security Council, but if it succeeds, even on the streets of Haiti. Will they succeed? We, we have to see, and it has to be done very differently from the way it was done last time. All right. Uh, lastly, Ambassador, before I let you go, um, as uh, President William Ruto was heading uh, to New York and calling for humanity, uh, there was a cloud of the protests that we witnessed earlier this year and how they were handled by police. What do you make of how he handled uh, questions to do with that on the global stage? Well, the last time I appeared on Citizen, I actually forgot to say something which is I am exceptionally proud of young Kenyans. And young Kenyans have shown us um, their courage, their integrity, and their desire to transform Kenya. And I think they should be applauded by everybody. And I think they are being applauded and respected. Now, the, the, the response which did lead to young Kenyans being injured and some being killed is deeply unfortunate. Um, and my hope, is that it has not deeply damaged Kenya's image abroad. Um, President Ruto was being asked tough questions on CNN, and he was answering them. I think beyond an interview, I think the world will be waiting to see how the voice and desires of young Kenyans for transformed governance are respected by the political class. All right. Thank you for speaking to us this evening. Ambassador Martin Kimani there. He has served in various capacities within the U.N. system and is currently the executive uh, director. You can see on his name tag there, the center for international cooperation at New York University. Thank you very much, Ambassador. We will continue to engage you moving forward. And on that note, we take a break on Citizen Weekend, but coming up. Charity organizations and local professionals team up in Bobasi Kisi to celebrate elders. Details after the break. Introducing Sour Milking Jelly from Pwani Oil Products. Sour Milking Jelly is natural and preservative-free, crafted with purity in mind, ensuring a clean, natural choice for your household needs. With its high melting point, Sour Milking Jelly stays solid, providing reliable performance whenever you need it most. The user-friendly pack allows for easy scooping until the very end. Experience the versatility and reliability of Sour Milking Jelly today. A pure and natural choice for your household needs available at your nearest shop. Ulikuwa una expect ukiambiwa ati umeshinda 50 Gs. Sikukua na hiyo imani nitapata. Sasa nilikuwa nafikiria tu yani acha nijaribu. Check ni yako hii. Alafu tunakuaga pia na goodie bag. Hii tunaitanga the Jipange goodie bag. Salamia watu wa keumbu, wa cheze, na mungu wata wasaidia wa shinde kama wa mimi. Kama wewe, sindio. Sasa? Wasan. Ile stiki ya zero sugar ni nini? Kujui club zero? Nabuwa ni kushow. 
digestive seeded bread, zero added sugar, high in fiber and protein. Look at zero sugar. Soma level. Sasa mama tashkua. Wepo kwa club zero. Because I need to go. I am not going to be able to get a little bit of a zero and of a little bit Zero added sugar and reduced salt. Napenda. Asante sana mwanangu. Na hii festive whole meal ni yako babu. <laughs> Imepunguzwa chungi za so malebo. This is very good. Ah, hii mkati ya heritage. Jina chungi jingi. Alapo ni nguwe. <laughs> Karibu ni Club Zero. Carefully read the food label before consuming your products. The balanced recipe with reduced salt and zero added sugar is good for you and your family. Mina wewe tumetoa na mbali maze. Nilikuwa hapo ni your first day to kimkatia na kakuota as it seems yamekushiba. Nilikuwa hapo pia ukida utamchunga kama mayai. Ish. Nilikuwa hapo busy ya kuku mkianza. Mki expect mtoi wa kwanza. Bas, nilikuwa hapo tena. Kuona ukiomoka kama boss. Nilikuwa hapo ki make choices not only delicious, but pia highly nutritious. Tumetoa na mbali ni mina wewe. And after all these years, hatu wachani. Since 1984, Kenchi has helped Kenyan farmers to thrive and families to grow. To Zidi Pamoja. Wateja who prefer stock zamu. Juzi ko tayari kubaliwa pap. Wa. Lakini vile hii ekonomi imetufinya. Ili nibidi kubadilisha sabuni ni katumia ingine rahisi. Bala. Ilibidi nioshe kila kitu marambili. Sikuwa na otherwise ni karudia aerial. Mi upata clean and fresh results. Kwa mwosho moja tu, aerial ndio siri yangu. Tasa story yangu iko pop to la sana. Aerial, usafibora kwa mwosho moja tu. for every dreamer, creator, striver, and believer. At APSA CIB, we are invested in your story, and we invite you to write it with us, because your story matters. APSA. mode because of doodos in your house kill doodos instantly with vault the high performing pyrethrum based insecticide that's strong and effective on all insects from tropical brands Should be the next singing superstar. Has Dolan on even skin tone taken away your confidence? Presenting Shalina Healthcare's new Epiglow. With power of Triple Radiance Complex, an innovative technology that gives you glowing skin by reducing dark spots in 28 days. Skin science for a perfect glow. New Epiglow. Maria anachukua vitu za mama Chali akiweka kwa bag yako. Salome ni kuulize, ni nini huko ambapo ana huyu mama? Excuse me.
section of leaders in Mombasa have asked the Director of Criminal Investigations to expedite investigations into circumstances surrounding the abduction and sexual assault of a 25-year-old Mombasa blogger two weeks ago. Led by UDA Secretary General Hassan Omar and former Nyali Member of Parliament Awiti Bolo, the leaders claim the probe could be derailed due to political interference, saying those involved must carry their crosses and justice must prevail for the Said victim. The DCI had requested for more time to conclude investigations where about 20 people are believed to have been involved in the incident. We want justice. And this one, I'm not joking. To attack a Sharia in Fatwe, Nayule Askari Zote, Wali Piga Sim, to Nayo Sim, Wame Sema Mukuba Nihuyu, Kama Tuna Askari, Yakufanya Kaziao. I am totally for justice. Ajua. Ati ujamaa naongojea rais kuja kuongea nae asishitakiwe. Iwa yeweze kani huu rais kuja kuchaguliwa kwa hile mambo wawa nafanya. Our broad-based government was not about impunity of a few of others. A suspect to think he can hide behind a broad-based government to try and think that he can not respond to the, to the, to the summons of the, uh, the, the, the security intelligence or the, the director of criminal investigations. We have our eyes on the ball. Anything but not impunity. If he's involved, he must face the music. If he's, if he's not involved, then the law will also take its course. So it is time. People will carry their cross. People will pay the price. People will face the full wrath of the law. This is a law-abiding country. We are a law-abiding people. As the world prepares to mark the International Elderly Day on the 1st of October 2024, hundreds of elders from Bobasi constituency in Kisi converged at Nyagesa village for a treatment by a group of area professionals in collaboration with charity organizations. The aged shared their stories on deplorable conditions in villages amid biting economic times. And as Crispino Tino reports, each elder went home smiling after receiving goodies, including blankets and and food stuff. They say old age is like everything else. To make a success of it, you've got to start young. <laughs> However, for many years, senior citizens have asked the government to cushion them against the harshness of life in its later stages. Despite the government introducing stipends for the elderly from the age 65 and above way back in 2007, the elderly are still grappling with challenges, including loneliness, killings associated with witchcraft, land inheritance, among other issues. It is for the above reasons that stakeholders, including Bobasi professionals in Kisi, in collaboration with charity organizations, trooped to Nyagesa village for a special kind of celebration, one about the elderly. From their faces inside this church hall, the elderly, though happy, reflect the challenges they endure daily. For some, their smiles are fleeting and perhaps just fit for the occasion, if what they undergo in the villages is anything to go by. <laughs> the get-together ceremony brought light to their faces after they were treated to goodies including foodstuff and warm blankets. Professionals have organized uh, to celebrate our elderly today and uh, that's the reason we are here today to celebrate with our elderly you know they face a lot of challenges um, in the country we have about three million elderly persons and uh, these older persons face a lot of challenges uh, you know most people support them their youngsters are moved to towns the elderly celebrations meeting also provided an opportunity for the national government officers to offer sensitization on the social health authority and today we are here as administrators to actually take advantage of the gathering that is here so that we can sensitize members of the public on matters health and more so recently we were tasked uh, with the sensitization and registration of SHA. the elders could not hide their joy and called for events I thank you for you what you have given us, such as this blanket. I don't know even this blanket. I wish 
God may praise you what you have done for us. Kenya had an elderly population of 3.9%. Senior citizens aged 65 and above totaled to 1,870,493. That was an increase of 538,220 from the 2009 census. These numbers are expected to grow significantly by 2029. This year's theme being aging with dignity. As the world prepares to mark the International Elderly Day on 1st of October, the senior members of the society say that despite the stipend they receive from the government, they still face myriad of challenges and if not well addressed, may affect them in future. Chris Pinotieno for Citizen TV, Bobasi, Kisi County. St. Paul's Catholic University Chaplaincy and Parish, in collaboration with Royal Media Services, along with other partners, have conducted a free medical camp in Nairobi. A large number was reported to have attended, coming from various parts of the country. This year's event marks the 36th I beg your pardon, edition of the camp, which aims to address the ongoing challenge of accessing quality health care in the country. Services offered at today's camp include cancer screenings for cervical, breast and prostate cancers, blood sugar tests, dental, eye and pediatric services, as well as gynecological consultations. The initiative has been providing essential healthcare services to the underserved as part of their mission to support the community over three decades. More than 1,500 Kenyans turned up from across the country. Other partners of the initiative included the Italian Embassy, Rainbow Africa UK and Kenya, leading local hospitals and medical facilities. toka uh, Bomet kama kawaida tukienda kama kwa mahospitali na kuanga ngumu kupata opportunity, opportunity kama hii so tunashukuru sana pia ikiesafika kwa ma counties tunaweza shukuru sana we all know that access to quality healthcare is one of the main concerns in everybody life but still unfortunately access to quality healthcare is often a luxury that many cannot afford because of the scarcity of resources. We have a number of people in need of these services. So we're calling out to the hospitals that are around and to the people of goodwill. If they are able, when these are people trying to organize these free medical camps, if they are able to offer their support or the pharmaceuticals, if they are able to come in and donate drugs and all this, they will be able to reach a wider uh, margin of people that really are in need of these services. I want to thank the people who have come today to be with us today. I would like to, in a special way, our partners who have come to be with us today, most of Radio Citizen, Royal Media Services, for being with us today. Thank you very much for making this medical camp very successful. FKF Premier League match between Shabana and Poster Rangers of boats after referees failed to turn up at the stadium. Introducing 